Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q3 of the weekly contest 253 on lead code. Minimum number of swaps to make the string balance. Um, so th this one is a tricky one, and the key thing to note about this problem is to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, give me some support, give me some love. Uh, but yeah, and especially if you like these contests, uh, join me on Discord because people talk about contests on my Discord all the time, and I try to help out as I can. Anyway... So I solved this one in about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, and I actually spent some time just get self second guessing myself. The short answer is going to be greedy um, in a weird way. But I think you can usually spend a lot of time on this one if, you, um, if you're not convinced or if you're trying to prove or if you're trying to do a, a crazy algorithm. So the key thing also is noticing that n is 10 to the 6. So that means that... Um, you cannot do something in n square, and anything greater than n square is going to be too slow. Maybe you can do things in n log n, but that's about as fast as it, uh, as slow as you can get away with. So here, I took a meta approach of thinking that, okay, that means that it's probably greedy. And I think I also refreshed the page on this point, and I saw that people already got it accepted. Um, I was about five minutes in, so maybe. Yeah, I saw a couple of people got it accepted, so I was like, okay, maybe it's greedy. And I thought to myself, all right, let's look at the constraints, right? Um, N is even, this is well-formed, and this is balanced. You may skip over this particular piece, but this piece is the key observation for this piece, which is that it is perfectly balanced, so that means that you don't have any weird edge cases because you can get greedy as much as you can. So the greedy way that I did this it's basically, okay, we implement this using a stack. Um, if you have, you know, if you have questions about implementing a, the stack solution for checking whether um, to, to basically balance uh, parentheses, definitely, uh, you know, do other lead code problems that are relating to stacks and parentheses and so forth to, to get a good intuition about it um, because this is going to be, you know, it's going to be key to understanding it. So basically, the idea will be that, let's say we don't have any swaps. This is going to be, a, roughly speaking, this is going to be our code. And the only way that this is going to be invalid is if stack is less than z zero, right? Because if stack is less than zero, that means that we have we have too many uh, too many negative things. And because, th because in this problem, it's always going to be balanced because the other possible case is that you have too many of these that are unbalanced at the very end. But because that you always have the same number of opens and ends, um, this is actually not a case that can come up. So the only bad case is if you have cases like this, right? Um, where you, you want to go negative. So then our greedy solution is, okay, let's say we have some, some, um, some swaps like this. What do we do? Well, let's say we have some here. So then now we, we push, we, we push, we pop, we pop, and then we see this one, right? We see this one, we go, okay, this is actually no good. But what does that mean? That means that we now want to switch this with an uh, open, right? We, and we have to by, you know, because otherwise this is no good. But which one do we switch it with? Well, we know that there is going to be one open somewhere in the world that's going to be unmatched in, later. We don't know where it is. And for the purpose of this problem, actually, it does not matter. Because you could almost think about, you know, owing someone money in the future. So you're owing, you know, right now, uh, as you get to here... Oh my god. Uh, if you get to here, you're owing someone an open parentheses. So let's actually just borrow one from the future. And that's basically what we have. And we kind of pay back in the future. That's basically the idea behind this greedy. And you can do more proofs to figure out why this works. And this is because at the worst case, you know, you can maybe proof by induction as well. And if you say, sorry, this looks weird because it keeps on auto causing for us. So this is the base case. And then you could kind of build more, you know, um, more things between it. But that's basically how you can think about it that way, as long as everything in the middle is uh, matched up. So yeah, so now doing, f f um, realizing all that, we can just go, okay, if stack is equal to zero, then that means that 
we need to borrow uh, the, from the future. So then we, and we, what happens when we borrow uh, uh, open rents, right? Well, the stack link goes one, and that means that we implement swap by one. Otherwise, we do we don't need, you know, in a greedy way, we don't need uh need we don't need an open parens yet, so we subtract it by one, and that's basically it. And this is um a very I would say it's a queen solution, and that's how you can see how a lot of people did it in like a minute or two if they're able to prove to themselves. Um, but yeah, but we just borrow and then we return it, you French in the end. And because we're always going to have the equal numbers of parents and closes, we know that at the very end, the, the debt would always be paid, and that at the very end, at this line, the stack will be at zero. Um, so as you can see, this is going to be linear time because this is just a for loop through the stack, uh, or for loop through the string, and we implement it through the stack. And this is all one space because we don't even, you know, we 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 emulate the stack with a number. So this is going to be just all of one space because we have two integers uh, to store the problem. Um, that's all I have for this one. You can watch me solve it live during the contest next, and you can maybe see how I maybe um. Just guessed. I definitely, to be honest, during the contest, I go load a little bit. I was like, eh. I wasn't super sure during the contest, but I just kind of gave it a go. And because I couldn't prove this incorrectly. And unfortunately, sometimes greedy problems are like that. You have to, uh, for contest anyway, because you try to do it as quickly as possible. And for me, my trade off was saying, okay, either this is right and I do it quickly because I couldn't disprove it quickly. Or if this is wrong, then I would get back a test case to, very quickly to figure out and then maybe learn from that test case. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for this one. You can watch me solve it live during the contest. Next. What a silly mistake. Okay. Ugh, yikes. And I did it to optimize too. If I didn't spend optimization, I would have saved time. People really got this, that's crazy. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this problem and the explanation and so forth in the comments or in my Discord. Uh, if you do contest, you know, come hang out in the in the Discord and just, you know, talk nerd to me. <laughs> anyway, hope y'all have a 
great weekend and stay good stay healthy the good mental health out see you later bye bye